Good evening and welcome to the February 1st, 2016 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Karen, could you please call the roll? Ms. Saunders? Mr. Bealey? Here. Ms. Auglis? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. Mazur? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Thank you. I just want to note that um, while Ms. Saunders is not here, she did provide emailed comments which have been provided to all board members as well as the applicants. The next item on the agenda is approval of minutes from the January 11th, 2016 meeting. I'd like to make a motion for approval, Mr. Chair. Second. There's a second. Any discussion? All in favor? So that's I think I have to abstain because I wasn't here for the whole meeting. Okay. And Ms. Saunders did have had, had one um, very minor comment, which will be incorporated. Item number four is election of planning board officers. I'd like um, to make a motion. Staff sent an email around and welcome a motion. I'd like to make a motion, Mr. Chair, uh, that we elect the following individuals for the 2016 offices for the Planning Board. Corey Fellows as Chairman, John Mazur as Vice Chairman, and Roger Bealey as Secretary. Second. <laughs> Surprise, Roger. As an alternate? There's a second <laughs> motion. Is there any discussion? I, uh, Roger, as an alternate, I'm not <laughs> sure if he's... <laughs> Eligible for a Eligible. secretary? Eligible, though great I point. can't. <laughs> that is a great I, I point. I protest that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Okay, I'll amend my motion uh, that uh, we elect Corey Fellows as chairman, John Mazur as vice Ron. chairman. Ron. Ron. I'm sorry, what did I say? John. John Mazur. Uh, Ron Mazur. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then we can talk about secretary, I guess, later. I can take a look at the, um, at the board requirements for that, but if the board's so inclined to wait on that or okay. So the motion, well, do we have a second for that motion now? I think you did. I'll second it. All right. <laughs> so we have a seconded motion that covers just the chair and the vice chair with the understanding that secretary would be for further discussion. I might add, you know, if there's a, if the individual here that's a voting member that would like to be secretary, <coughs> May I ask be glad to entertain May I ask through the chair? Yes. What does the secretary do? <coughs> I think that this, this may be the time to ask the question. Okay, since we're now discussing it, which mm -hmm. we've never done before, I think we should discuss it. Go ahead and, and have our elections for the two members that we really need to have officially elected and then really find out what, why we have to do this and what it means because... Ironically, the only thing I can think of that the secretary has done in the past is to prepare a slate <laughs> 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 for this that is true. <coughs> for this election. I okay. could do that. <laughs> <laughs> However, the, the person who previously <laughs> held that post left the board in December, yeah. so we have that void. I see. Susan, you don't have any interest in this role, do you? I don't think it's hard. I'm not doing it. Oh. <laughs> Is she nod her head yes? Well, no, not if you ask questions, no. you end up having to volunteer. No, no, no. Volunteer. I'm just that it'd be something that it means. I don't care. I don't want to nominate myself. myself. Yeah. Okay. I, I nominate my board to be secretary. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Any further discussion? So the motion as amended is? The motion as amended is Corey Fellows as chair, Ron Mazur as vice chair, and Mike Wood as secretary. Any further discussion? I might get your name right, secretary. <laughs> <laughs> it is important for the secretary to get the names right. All in favor? <laughs> Shall be unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Yay. Forward to serving. Okay. Item number five. Chulag LLC Bulos Management requests sketch plan review for 205 Southboro Drive, Lot 200, Condo Unit Number 3, Assessor's Map R37, Lot 48E. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, let's see, this parcel is in the B2 district. Um, 
which will ultimately, the proposal will require approval through our site plan review ordinance and the town's design standards. Uh, just by way of background, the parcel was first created in the 1980s as part of the Southboro Office Business Park, and it was further developed um, in 2006 with the Homewood Suites and 2008 with the Sebago Brewing. And this development is the third phase of this parcel uh, to be developed. Um, the site is what's known as a unified development in our ordinances, which essentially means that you can have multiple buildings on one lot. However, the lot, the, the, the parts of that development are to be sort of looked at as a whole. So um, while there may be separate tenants, um, the parcel itself is really what's sort of under review as part of this application. Um, but certainly the details will are around the merits of the proposal uh, before you. To that end, um, probably the most significant issue that staff identified in our comments has to do with the uh, proposed access to Payne Road. This is an issue uh, that the board had previously looked at under uh, prior uh, applications. Um, the, the access to the site is uh, currently at the intersection with Southboro Drive and Payne Road, which has a stoplight. And um, so this is one, one of the provisions in the ordinance uh, calls for limiting curb cuts. And, and if there are to be multiple curb cuts, the applicant is, um, needs to demonstrate that it actually has a, an overall benefit on the corridor. Um, and so that'll be something that moving forward, the applicant will need to work through with their uh, traffic engineer in any formal application they put together. Other issues <coughs> for consideration have to do with parking on site. Some board members have been on for a while may recall um, uh, when the Sebago Brewing Company went in, um, they had a no bunch of uh, overflow parking and there's been some established uh, agreements, parking arrangements, and that will be need to be, uh, need to be considered through the review as well. And then the final main element uh, staff would just want to identify is that this parcel is in the Red Brook watershed. Uh, this is one of the town's two urban impaired streams and certainly something we'll um, look for some sensitivity around through the design process. With that, I turn, oh, I just mentioned that, again, this is that sketch plan. So this is really an informal discussion, an opportunity for the applicant and board to sort of talk about the merits and identify issues before they put together their formal application. Um, moving forward. So with that, I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Jay. Uh, before we move on with this one, just one quick housekeeping note that I meant to make previously. Item number 7, 6 Washington Avenue, has been tabled at the request of the applicant. Okay. So with that, we will uh, welcome the current applicant. <coughs> that one should be on. Okay. It's on. My computer knows it's Monday. Thank you, Mr. Fellows, and thank you, Jay, for um, summarizing my presentation. I'm Christy Holmes with Goral Palmer. With me tonight is Paul Urenik with the Bolus Company and Randy Dunton of Goral Palmer. Um, we're pleased to have the opportunity to meet with you all tonight to go over this sketch plan application, and we appreciate the assistance from staff that we've received um, on a couple meetings prior to tonight. As Jay mentioned, our site is located in the Southboro Business Park. <coughs> um, and the um. Homewood Suites, um, right here, was approved in 2006 and the Sebago Brewing Company in 2008. Uh, here's our current unit number three. And it consists of about two acres. It's currently undeveloped. It's got a gravel parking lot. Um, there's a lease agreement with Sebago for 50 parking spaces with them. Um, and right now, the site, currently, the site's accessed here through the Southboro Drive, come all the way down here. 
In accordance with the design criteria, the building has been located as close to Payne Road as possible with parking to the rear of the structure. Curb cuts are minimized. Interconnecting access is provided to Homewood Suites and Sebago Brewing. And pedestrian accommodations, if you can follow my little hand here, from Payne Road to the proposed building. So initial construction is, is proposed to be this building here. It's uh, 6,600 square feet of retail with multiple tenants. The tenants have not been identified yet. And we've also reserved in 1,500 square foot area for a drive-through and tenants for that have not been identified either. And there's a queue length for six vehicles as required. I don't know if um, you can see it, but we did hatch the um, 50 spaces for Sebago Brewing. There are these spaces approximately right around here. So this area here is potential um, future construction of a 4,500 square foot retail building, and that's what these associated parking spaces would be for. This, as Jay mentioned, staff forwarded Ms. Saunders' stormwater comments to our office, and we will certainly look into them before the site plan application. A, storm, a full stormwater report will be submitted, and we're looking at various treatment options and we'll certainly meet with the town engineer and include inspection and maintenance report. As far as architect architecture goes, our client has not um, brought an architect on board yet, but the structure will complement the adjacent structures, the Sebago Brewing. Um, it will most likely have a two kind of front facades, one facing Payne Road and then one facing the back the parking lot. Um, it will incorporate elements such as fake windows and doors, um, awnings, and vertical and horizontal relief as required in the commercial district manual. Um, there was a comment from staff about the dumpster being quite a ways away. Um, and we'll, we put it back there to reduce the visual impact, but we'll certainly look at alternate options that are closer to the building. And as part of the sketch plan requirements, um, it's required for a conceptual landscaping plan. So um, this is what we submitted. Uh, I think um, we'll work towards adding more green space because I don't think that's enough right now. But um, let's see. Town staff did facilitate a discussion with Lazy Boy Furniture. There, this a budding, a budding parcel right here about a possible shared access, but to date they have declined to participate. So we have proposed a right in and right out curb cut here, and my colleague Randy Dutton will now speak a little bit about that. Good evening. <clears throat> Excuse me, getting over cold. Um, Mr. Chair, members of the board, members of the staff. Um, as Christy described, the uh, the site will include, or is currently proposed, with um, a 6,610 square foot uh, retail facility and a 1,500 square foot um, restaurant. Uh, this project did receive uh, or did get a traffic movement permit back in 2008. Um, the only portion of that permit that has not been constructed was an 11,250 square foot uh, restaurant. Um, so this would kind of replace that um, previously approved uh, restaurant area, if you will. Um, we have received the staff comments. We have received uh, Mr. Bray's comments. Um, we are aware that the uh, the write-in, write-out is a uh, topic of discussion. Um, we will have to, this project will require, at the very least, a modification to the existing traffic movement permit, uh, quite possibly uh, a new complete traffic movement permit depending on how much trip 
uh, it generates. So the purpose of tonight is to listen to you um, and hear what you have to say, see what your concerns are, um, take that in combination with uh, Mr. Bray's comments as well as staff comments um, and DOT's comments, take them all together in whole and um, try to come up with a plan that, that addresses those, those concerns and comments or at least uh, identifies what our alternatives are. So um, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, be more than happy to answer any questions or Christy can answer questions as well. Thank you. So is that that's your that's yeah, answer? we wanna okay. we're here more to listen to to you. Sure, sure. It is sketch plan as as you noted and, and Jay noted it's is sort of the, the first more kind of informal step and there's gonna be a lot of additional information and data for all of us to look at and review and absolutely a full a full traffic impact study will be submitted, absolutely. Great. So uh, with that, we'll turn to board discussion. Would you like to start off, Ron? Yeah, I'll start. And let's start with the obvious, and that's the traffic. Um, <clears throat> but b before I even get to turning in and out of Plain Road, how do you propose, if you have a restaurant attached to the retail building, the flow of traffic, because you said you wanted a drive through too, what would be the the traffic flow, how would it work? Depending on which way depending on which way they came in, they would either if they came in from this direction and they wanted to say go through the drive through, <coughs> they would turn the corner and come in this way. If they took a right in, they would come around and come up into the drive through that way. And how would they exit? Um, they could either exit if they wanted to go right, they could exit out this direction here, or if they wanted to, um, say, take a left, they would come out and go this way up to Southboro and out through the signalized intersection. Okay. Where, where would be the entrance to the retail aspect of things? Um, the entrance to the retail right now, again, this is, this is conceptual only, um, the entrance to the retail is right here, and the entrance to the restaurant um, is right here. Okay, so so facing Payne Road would almost be like the back side of the building. No, it it would be, it would look like it would it would physically be the back side of the building, but it would be. We anticipate addressed to accommodate whatever your your concerns are or your your needs are and look more like um it would look nice it wouldn't look like the back of a building okay um absolutely um if i could uh paul urenic would like to just address the architecture for a second yeah you have to go up to the come on up to the podium and introduce yourself thank you uh paul urenic cbre the bolus company uh, yeah, that's one of the challenges that we had when we were looking at siting this building is um, getting the building, you know, as close to Payne Road as possible, as you folks like to have them. But then that also, you know, you have to put all the parking then in the back if you have the building up towards the front. So the natural path for people to walk, of course, is the entrance to the building. Of course, the natural path would be on what's called the rear side, but um, what the architectural objective would be would be to make the Payne Road side of that building actually look like the front of the building through use of glass and storefront and you know whatever so it's certainly not meant to look like we don't want it to look like the back of a building uh, if anything we'll make the Payne Road side of the building probably even a little more attractive than the parking lot side of the building thank you now let, let's talk about in and out mm -hmm. of Payne Road. I mean, I'm down in that area quite a bit, and so I'm sure other members of the board are. And as it is now, it's very confusing because the right to go into South Bowl, a lot of people are taking that right because they're thinking of going on to 295, and it's very close now. And in my opinion, to, to have another entrance and exit in that particular spot, I have a lot of reservations. Okay. Okay, and, and 
I'm usually the most liberal of the board <laughs> members, so if if I have reservations about that, I'm, I'm sure. And it, I know there was concern by by uh, some of the peer members of of, of, of staff too. Um, that one is a difficult one for me uh, okay. to have a, another entrance and, and exit. And and it's confusing as far as far as where Sebago is and. Uh, and, and the hotel, not so much for the hotel because that's in the back, but but going in there and getting to, to Sebago and then having another structure, I just can't put my arms around it right now. Not to say I'm I'm totally negative. I just can't put my arms around it. And okay. and in conjunction with that, as staff pointed out, uh, making sure that all of the uh, uh, parking space requirements for the hotel and Sebago and any new entities would meet the ordinances of the, the town is another issue. It may sound insignificant, but in the big picture, it is not insignificant. Um, and I heard what you say that the next door neighbor, and that doesn't surprise me at all, is reluctant to come to some sort of uh, mutual agreement of using that area, and I, I understand that's an obstacle for you, and unfortunately, because I think that would have been a, at least right. mitigate a lot of the situations that I'm talking about. Um, to me, that's, you know, without seeing the architecture and everything else, which I'll leave, and, and landscaping, and, and also I would, would stress with all of this, let's assume for, the, for a moment that we go ahead, pedestrian movement is going to be very important in all of this safety of pedestrian movements in and in between the various structures and, and entities that are in that space right now. Uh, so that would have to be worked out, you know, to everybody's satisfaction also. And I think I've said enough for the moment, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ron. Nick? Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm going to echo a little bit of what Ron has said here. I, my major concerns with what I'm looking at is definitely the curb cuts. Um, that is an extremely busy area. Mm -hmm. I have a question. <coughs> um, it goes back to something um, I believe you had said earlier, which was it's as close as possible to the Payne Road as we can get it. And I, I wanted to clarify, is that because of the entranceway and the spacing you need because of the roads, or is it because of geographical features? My point being, if those curb cups went away, can the building move in the other direction closer to Payne Road? And I, I'm going to kind of help you understand where I'm going with this. Is the 50 parking lots, uh, pick, you know, the parking spaces for Sebago, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a count here of 97 spaces. That 97 spaces includes the 50 that you're giving to Sebago to begin with. Is that correct? Yes. So you're you're proposing 47 new parking spaces for uh, potentially two brand new retail locations and a restaurant. And that concerns me. Okay. So my point being is if, if things shifted, can you get more parking because of it uh, with, with losing curb cuts? Um, not that I want to design this plan for you, but I, I, those are items that I think cool. you really need to pay attention to because I know that Sebago overflow lot is used. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to expect that those 50 spaces that are designated for Sebago currently would be utilized a lot of the time and I have the concern that you're going to be adding in potentially three new retail spaces, if not more, considering the other one probably could be subdivided a little, whether or not you'll have adequate parking for the, for the new businesses. So that would be, that'd be one area I'd like you to keep an eye on and, and think about as you go forward. Um, also, in your current plan, did you have any plans for, like, loading docks? Or how does a tractor trailer get in there? And, and I mean, if you have a retail space, I imagine there's – there's goods to be uh, shipped in, and I don't really see how that would work on this current design. Okay. So, um, just thinking of the business aspect of that, uh, I think that's that's the high points for me. I mean, um, I'm glad to see that you know we're putting things in there. But those are those are my major major concerns with the current design. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Mike. Oh, thanks. I'm I'm not uh, I'm not convinced that the curb cut and payment is such a such a bad thing. Um, 
one effect of having curb cuts will kind of calm the traffic down, so to speak. But um, as you enter this area, this proposed area, is, is it divided? Is Payne Road divided right there from traffic that's moving? Uh, I don't know what's north and south, but let's say south is this direction. Can they make a left turn in if they wish? Yes. They yes. can? That would be, I think that would be my concern, having the curb cut there, because I don't think a left turn in would be, would be beneficial in that area. But I'm not convinced a right turn in or a right turn out is such a bad thing. Um, the queuing, I'm wondering if you can design that. So I'm concerned as to how folks would exit the property. Uh, if they came in from Payne Road and made a right turn and went around, if they queue, it's easy to get out. But if they visit the retail, I think most folks would want to get out again through Payne Road. And my thinking is you haven't designed this to allow folks to travel back back through the property and exit out of Payne Road if they're not queuing. Is that yeah, correct? No, that's that's actually this area here yeah. is is not striped, but it's two lanes. It's it's both directions. It is two lanes, okay. Yes. Yep. Because I think the vast majority of folks would elect to do that. Yeah. If they were going to take a right out on the pane, they would go out that way. If they were going to take a left, they would go out through the uh, signalized intersection. Uh, correct, yes. Yep. And you'll have to have signage that will help <coughs> direct oh, folks absolutely. that way. Um, well, before you, before you said that might be two-way, and uh, I believe you certainly, but <coughs> I'm wondering if it can be designed where there's also an opportunity I've seen queuing lanes where they're wide enough where folks can travel just the outside of the queued lane mm -hmm. and utilize that way to exit also. I don't know if that might benefit this, this plan at all. Okay. Um, we've had issues with uh, uh, inordinate num uh, numbers of cars queuing at uh, these kinds of uh, establishments, drive through type establishments, and it's impacted like uh, Route 1 traffic. I'd hate to think that the queuing would be such that it would impact folks coming in and out of that property also. So, Right. Um, the, the way this site plan um, is laid out <coughs> currently, uh, that won't be an issue um, because there's no restriction to them coming in. So if there were queuing on site, it's not going to impact uh, any roadway traffic, if you will. Right, right. It'll only impact, if it impacts anything, it'll impact the uh, internal Right. Movements. Correct. Uh, uh, my colleague mentioned uh, pedestrian accommodations. Mm -hmm. I, I think this begs for um, opportunities to, to direct pedestrians from the hotel to visit the establishment on foot. Uh, I see you've had you have striped areas <coughs> on the sidewalk, but it seems like it would benefit if you did that also from the hotel area. And. Um, the parking for the retail, it appears that the, uh, the drive-through is not going to really accommodate a sit-down scenario. But so the retail area, you, is it, it, you really just have those two areas of parking right in front of the, uh, the, the future build-out? Mm -hmm. Right. There's, there's additional parking all around the future build-out. There's parking here and parking here as well. And that, that would be uh, utilized if that should be built out later on. Correct. Everything in gray is not built, correct, the, as far as the pavement? Everything in gray is proposed pavement, yes. So currently you have a lease agreement with Sebago Brewing that allows them to use spaces that approximate what's depicted here? Because it's not built out, right? Correct. Correct. Do they utilize that now? I mean, do, yes. do they park on like a gravel? Yes. Yeah. They do. Yeah. And based on real life experience, do you see that outside of the 50 that you've agreed to it, or you have a lease with, do you see that that, it, that would accommodate the real life experience? Yeah, we would, we would expect it to, yes. I'm just wondering like, you know what, like I know when I visit Sebago, you know, I'm usually not parking down there, but it does seem pretty crowded, so I was just wondering if down in that area, if they're actually utilizing more space than what that right. illustrates. The, the benefit of having um, a mixed-use development such as this, um, 
provides for off-peak or shared parking. For instance, Sebago Brewing is probably not going to peak at the same time that the retail facility is going to peak. Um, so their parking demands are not going to uh, occur at the same time. Mm -hmm. And especially if the 1,500 square foot restaurant were, were orient, uh, oriented towards the morning, um, you know, that's definitely not going to uh, occur at the same time that the other uses are going to occur. So that's the benefit of having a mixed use type development such as this is your, your parking demands are, as mm -hmm. well as your, your uh, traffic volumes are not going to occur at the same time. What about site distances? Have you looked at that as far as, I mean, is that, is that uh, vegetation um, reflective site, of the site current? Site distance would have to meet criteria. Yeah. Right. What are the, uh, what, it, does that illustrate the current conditions, this picture right here, the tree cover and all that? There's, there's a tree that's kind of greened out, if you will, over in this area here. Mm -hmm. So that would have to be you know, cleared so that appropriate site distances could be, could be achieved and maintained. So I'm not, uh, just to summarize, I'm not convinced that the, uh, the curb cut on Payne Road is, um, is, is a bad thing per se, but uh, except for the fact that I wouldn't want traffic to be invited to turn left into the facility right. from Payne Road uh, in my other comments, but uh, I think that'd be it for now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have one further question. Sure, Right now, everybody's using the lights to go into South Bow. Correct. Why couldn't that be used for everybody? I mean, even future. Yep. It's, it's a good question. I'm, I'm glad you... May I answer? Sure. Okay. Um, the thought process behind the right turn, right turn in and out is, is a couple reasons. Um, the first is obvious uh, for a retail or a... Um, a restaurant type facility uh, such as what you know a coffee shop um, it's difficult it would be difficult to get to the site or circuitous to come in through the signal and come back to the site um, in doing that they're also going through numerous other parking lots and I've heard you know uh, pedestrian safety uh, as it should is a concern and, and that would be our concern as well is having these cars flow through the parking areas um, to get to their destination at the end. Um, fortunately, uh, you know, there is an area for right in, right out. We know that a left turn, left in or out, would be out of the question. Um, the purpose of, of restricting it to a right in, right out is Again, the, the safest movements onto Payne Road would be a right in and right out. Um, so it's to get vehicles to the site in a non circuitous way so that it would be less impactful to the other facilities, both pedestrians and vehicles that are getting in, uh, you know, pulling into a parking space or, or pulling out of a parking space. Um, and uh, to be honest, you know, a retail would um, shy away most likely from a facility that you have to go around, the, you know, around the, the U, if you will, to get to the facility. It's, it's not going to draw as much as people that can just pull into the, the facility when they, you know, see the name or something like that. So that was the, the thought process behind the right in, right out. We know there are some concerns. Uh, we appreciate that. We respect that. Um, we're definitely going to take that back and consider what our options are. Um, but that was the thought process. In, in I, and I don't disagree with you. I'm going to play devil's advocate with you. However, in all honesty, and I have said I've driven down that area a lot, people coming in that direction are going 30, 40 miles an hour. I mean, they're not creeping along. Sure. And, and to have a, another and other than that light is, is the concern. I'm yep. not saying it's, it's the whole issue in a nutshell, but right. it is a major concern as to how that flow of traffic now takes place. And I think that's where the, we read comments from, from the police department and so forth, and I think that's where their concern is, is mm -hmm. that, that that traffic is, is flying. 
and 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 if all of a sudden something wants to go into uh, you know that's all I'm saying. Sure, okay. absolutely. Thank no. you. Thank you. I'm not trying to monopolize, but I kind of want to chime in a little on that on the topic, which is if that curb cut goes in, I think what's going to happen is you're going to see a, a, an underutilization of the traffic light you have up ahead. Basically, you are now going to redirect, redirect any traffic into the site, whether it be through the hotel or Sebago, is going to come in to the first entrance they see, which is going to create a lot more traffic coming through your parking lots. So that would be my other major concern about mm -hmm. this. And then and I want to just also go back to one thing you said earlier, which was you're timing your parking spaces based on the type of business. We as a planning board have to take that longer term view. Your tenants will change. Uh, you know, it might be a coffee shop this year. Absolutely. Two years from now, it might not be. And sure. I think we have to build out and expect that those parking spaces are adequate for any future site build out. You can't put the horse back in the barn, so to speak. So, thanks. Done. Thank you, <laughs> Susan. <coughs> okay, Michael and I are going to take exact opposite views on this. I've been watching this since it was first d d developed and it disappeared. Way to go. There it is. Thank you. And knew that sooner or later we were going to come down to the nitty gritty, which is that the only safe way to access this is through the Southboro Drive. I understand exactly why you want that turn off um, pain road. It makes perfect sense. All the reasons you've ex explained for needing it for your business makes perfect sense. Um, however, the question of whether anything retail belongs down there or not is a very good question, I think. I think you need to look at it from the standpoint of do you really want to have people coming through the parking lot, either coming in or going out? Is that something that's going to get people to come? Cues. I mean, they're dangerous. Cues are dangerous. And you've got so many things going on in this, in this particular um, development all told. Just trying to make pedestrians safe without bringing in anything that is going to be retail or especially restaurant is going to be a challenge. But my big thing is access off Payne Road. I have seen one other place in Scarborough with a, the, an attempt to put in one of these would have been worse than this choice. Unfortunately, it did not go in. And it's traffic and pedestrians, it's traffic and pedestrians, it's traffic and pedestrians. And that's a very bad place to have it access. Okay. And our fire department agrees, our police department agrees. And I think you're going to have to get really show us some hardship before you're going to get me to agree anyway to coming in off Payne Road. It was that way when it was designed. It's been designed that way for a very long time. Someone else had tried to do that, and the town very clearly said, we don't want to do it. I'm sorry that you can't come in through um, Lazy Boy, that would have saved a whole lot of trouble. But as far as I'm concerned, it's just not going to work as a uh, drive through restaurant because of the access off Payne Road. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing else, Susan? Oh, I have lots, but mm, most, it. most of it's no. been um, already okay. taken up. That side took up most of the time, right? <laughs> 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 Roger? Okay, Go thanks. Ahead. Um, just a clarification, when you were um, speaking about the, the, uh, the first plan that was approved? Yes. Um, if I recall, th there were some, um, those are going to be restaurants, those two locations, the one you're proposing now and the future one? Yes. Right. Um, in the original um, approval, was there a curb cut or was everything internal, all the traffic internal? I do not believe there was a curb cut. Okay. Um, I, I, your problem is Payne Road, <laughs> because um, even Lazy Boy trying to get it's in the notes. going out of Lazy Boy to, to head south, but sometimes during the day it's almost impossible across Payne Road. Yeah. And also on the other side of the street where um, the pet store is, mm -hmm. and cause I, I think most most internal traffic. It's out going by Michaels, <coughs> towards Michaels, just to be able to go out by the lights to get out, get across. Right. It's it's so busy. Now the ironic thing is, I've been I've been going by using that street quite a bit recently, and in the morning, 
Um, oh, that's a you know, if you were going to have like a donut shop or something there, mm -hmm. I could almost see where that would work. Staff. Okay. Because there's a lot of traffic heading north on right. Payne Road, not so much going south on Payne Road. Right. But in the evening, it's just the reverse, and you're going to run into a lot of trouble with people. Here's here's another thing. When I when I was there this morning, I was I was I stopped at the lights right by the Goodwill, mm -hmm. and uh, you, it's hard to see the Sebago sign and everything from there. I was in the regular travel lane, and it, it's kind of, if you were heading south, I could see you could easily miss the, where the Sebago sign is until you're almost on it. Right. That, that means you've got to cut into the left lane, then you've got to cut, it, cut across. And I could see people eventually going down and say, oh, there's another opening there, and make, make the illegal left-hand turn. <laughs> so I, I think it's really, a, really is a problem, you know. And, and um, the other, the, the only other thing I would mention is um, on the internal parking area. I, I've been to Sebago Road quite often as well, and um, that could be a little confusing to people if they're not familiar with the whole area. You know, just in what way? Well, just if you're not, if you're not. Well, first of all, when you're coming off the 295. Uh, it, it's right there, you know, the left turn lane is almost, after you go over the bridge, the left turn lane is right there. It, it could be kind of confusing, and um, so I don't know whether internal signage or better lighting or anything like that would help, but okay. I, I, I think it's going to come down to all rearranging the internal traffic pattern that's going to make it work for you. I mean, I hope, hope you can make it work, but I, I think Payne Road's a real challenge. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Roger. Um, well, our board seems to have a lot of first-hand experience with the Sprue Pub. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that'll come in handy in a couple of agenda items uh, when we have our next Sprue Pub on the on the agenda. Um, there have been a lot of good comments uh, by my fellow board members, and I won't repeat all of them. Um, I will say that I sort of come down on the side of being very skeptical about the second curb cut. And um, I think it's important to keep in mind that, as I think staff noted, that um, the way the ordinance is written, the burden is really on the applicant to demonstrate not just that it would be convenient or um, preferred and maybe preferred in the short term for uh, sort of marketability purposes, but that this, the curb cut, the second curb cut, would need to actually improve the situation in terms of traffic flow and, and safety. Um, and as Ms. Auglis pointed out, this is sort of the existing condition, and uh, in my mind anyway, um, that's a pretty, a pretty high burden mm -hmm. for the applicant to be able to, to meet. So I look forward to seeing the traffic impact study and uh, the next iteration of your, of your plan and sort of see what you come back with in terms of support for that or maybe another way of looking at it. Um, there have been some good comments on internal circulation. Uh, Mr. McGee makes a good point about perhaps the unintended consequence of the second curb cut in that it may actually create more through traffic through the parking lot mm -hmm. uh, to the hotel or the brew pub. So um, I, I certainly understand and I think we all understand the, the dilemmas that you face here with this site, at least um, insofar as there's a, a determination to have this type of tenant or, or mix of tenants. but we have to keep in mind that this is a previously approved plan and we've got to um, look at this within the context of the ordinance. Um, we haven't really talked about architecture, which is fine, it's, it's sketch stage, but I will say um, while I certainly appreciate the intent and the spirit behind this notion of not, wanna, not wanting to have the, something that looks like the back of the building face Payne Road, I think based on past experience, um, this board, at least I and I think a couple of others, um, would look very closely and critically at, at how you propose to do that. Um, we've had a couple of examples of good intentions that didn't quite work out when, when they were actually implemented. Um, and I think one thing I'd, wa I'd be wary of is anything that looks just too sort of blatantly false um, that sort of looks like a Disney storefront um, where you have just blatantly fake windows and things like that. 
So again, I think there are things that can be done to achieve that that, that are maybe a little more nuanced and subtle. Um, I certainly won't design it for you, but uh, that's just sort of a, something I'll throw out there to the extent we get, we get into architecture for next time. Um, the question raised about parking and, and demand and capacity, and hopefully we'll see more on that. Um, and the only other comment I'll make, is it's a little bit more of a housekeeping comment, is that uh, we will have the opportunity for public comment next time. This stage here, again, this is more of a, you know, an initial conversation and just getting a feel for things. Next time we'll presumably have a traffic impact study and some other things to respond to. And this board will be able to dig into it a little <coughs> bit more and we'll open it up for public comment as well. I know there may be some abutters and others who might have some, some concerns as well. So um, is there anything else you need from us at this stage? Mr. Chair, just yeah, let me. Go ahead. Uh, Hold on, Ron, please. Go ahead. Uh, no, thank you all very much. Um, believe me, we l hear you loud and clear and on the whole curb cut issue. Um, so we hear you. Um, Mr. McGee, you had, you had, I think, a couple questions. One of them was, was there anything really preventing the building from being pushed more forward other than the curb cut? And the answer is no. I think without that, we could move it forward more. Um, your other question had to do with you, uh, it seemed to you that the number of parking spaces there just didn't make sense when you counted them in uses. And I believe we went right by the ordinance. It was like four per thousand. But uh, hey, if you, you know, I'm all about more parking spaces. Usually when I go to planning boards, they want less impervious, you know, especially when you're in the Red Book area and Long Creek and, you know, doing with that. But, uh, um, more parking, you know, if we could get five spaces per thousand, six spaces per thousand, wherever, you know, that's, that's believe that that's more of a benefit to us. So if we can do it, we will. And, um, would, and we also, next time we come in, I'm, I'm thinking out loud here with really not having the benefit of speaking to the owner of the property, but um, we may come in again next time with another sketch plan um, before we take the next step, I, I had a good conversation with our neighbor and my friend Arthur um, next door, and maybe we can, you know, work something out with, you know, our neighbor on the other side and do something to benefit everybody. So we'll see. I just wanted to say, it's not that, that we don't want anything to go in there. It's no, no, I believe me. I understand. I understand. No, I, I get it. I get it. It's and the only thing I'll add on the parking is that, and this is just speaking for myself as one, yeah. one board member, but I personally wouldn't want you to come away feeling like we're inviting you to add a lot of extra parking just for the sake of active adding parking. But I think what we want to see is we just want to be comfortable that it's that, that, there's, enough. that, there's, that there's enough and that we understand kind of what the methodology is yeah. and, how, and how the math all works. And I think we, we generally do like yeah. to try to limit impervious surface within reason, so sure. we just want to see a You know, typically we shoot for <coughs> 5 per thousand in retail. This is 4 per thousand, you know. If we could get 5 per thousand, another, you know, I don't know, um, 10 spaces or something, that'd be great. Uh, so, when you add both sides. We'll come back with another okay. sketch plan before we take this one further. I think it makes sense. Thank you all, all for right. your time. Thank you. See that for a second again. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, yes. can I make a comment? Sure. On this memo, this town of Scarborough memo, uh, a couple of my colleagues referred to the concern that the public safety departments and uh, it says SEDCO, it also talks about the fire department, their concerns with the prior applicant's curb cut, but it's just a statement. In the future, I think it'd be beneficial, at least for me, to see what their concerns actually were. If, mm -hmm. instead of just a, a synopsis, if you know what I mean. I mean, I don't, I don't recall, I don't remember that, that discussion. If that took place back when this development was originally proposed in 06, mm -hmm. 08, was that, was that the intent of the, uh, of the comment? Uh, nope, it was during our interdepartment meeting. Uh, just the various departments go around and state there, again, mm -hmm. it being sketch plan and not having a lot of information, they just right. sort of said, yeah, we see this right, right in, right out, and this, we have concerns that that's 
could well, rightfully, cause further problems. Rightfully so. We all give a lot of credibility to these departments, and you know, and I, I just would benefit if, if I had a little bit more substance to what it was that they were actually saying and why. Okay. Okay. That's all. Right. Thank you. Good comment. Thank you. Next item, On the Vine Marketplace requests amended site plan review for 591 U.S. Route 1, Assessor's Map, U34, Lot 33. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is board members will probably have noticed and may recall um, back in uh, 2014, I believe it was, um, the applicants approached the town for modifications to the Dunstan Schoolhouse Restaurant. Uh, to turn the restaurant, in, to repurpose the restaurant into a marketplace. Um, at that time, there were a few site adjustments that needed <coughs> to be made, most notably the addition of about 750 square feet for a cold storage area. That was administratively approved at the time. When the applicants were preparing for their, um, to open up and get their certificate of occupancy, when staff reviewed the plans, we noticed there were a few inconsistencies. Um, and so as part of that process, as we typically do, we secured a performance guarantee to either correct those issues or have the applicants come uh, before the board to discuss those in detail and, and let the board de determine whether what has been done um, is satisfactory and meets meets the, uh, the board's um, requirements. So um, with that, Mr. Chair, I'd turn it back to you. Thank you, Jay. Um, is the applicant here? Come on up. Scott Edwards, one of the owners. Okay. Abel Schultz. Okay. Also one of the owners. All right. Do you have anything else you'd, you'd like to add to the synopsis that uh, Jay gave us? We've all read your, your memo and uh, just anything you'd like to add or? Um, not really. I, I tried to keep it pretty simple. Uh, kind of a simple guy, so that's what I did. Um, we did uh, go ahead on the on the uh, the HVAC units, we just we went ahead and put the black um, insulated covering on it to try and um, hide um, the look of those things. We didn't want them in that building. Um, there was a lot of things um, when the plumbers, the electricians, and the HVAC guys came in. You know, every single one of them said, "You need to tear this building down. Um, <laughs> it's got to go." Mm -hmm. um, and we bought the building because we love the building, um, and we certainly weren't going to tear it down. But um, we were kind of forced into the position of, of putting that heating system in, that heating and air conditioning system in because the space is so large, um, and to get the appropriate um, amount of heat and air into there, we, we, needed, we had to put them in there. Hood system, um, we thought we were okay based on what we did in, an, in another store in a completely different location. Uh, we thought we were going to be okay. Uh, Jim Butler kind of didn't even look at it. Um, uh, and it's probably because we didn't put it in there appropriately in the plans uh, for the hood system and the exhaust. Um, came to find out later on and had to go to the top um, of the building. and So we did what, what he asked. Uh, we didn't want to do what he asked, but we did what he asked because <laughs> it needed to be done. Um, the gable thing, it's, we needed an eight-foot space for our meat cooler. Produce cooler doesn't really matter much, but our meat cooler, when you get <coughs> large pieces of meat coming in, you've got to cut them down. Um, you, you, you need that space. Um, so we had to make it eight, eight four, which made the level rise a little bit. And then, if you're going to put a gable up there, it would have looked it, it would have looked terrible. Um, so our builder said, you know, don't do that. And me, not having done me and Scott not having done this before, we didn't even think about you guys. And I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> a lot of lack of experience yeah. going on. <laughs> uh, we didn't even think about it. Yeah, go ahead, do it. Makes sense. Um, okay. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, before we go to the board, 
we do have the opportunity for any public comment. If anyone wants to come up and say anything. I don't see anyone, so Mike, do you have anything? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to orientate myself, but um, on bullet point five, this, this document here, yeah, where it lines up. up the fence I think you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Is that the back of the building? It is. Okay. And um, this here, bullet point two, the after, this is what exists now, and in the documentation it talks about, what did you just kind of minimize the impact of some of this piping? Yes, well, we put in... Uh, you can stay up there, uh, so everyone We can put know. in those, those uh, cooling units, we put in, um, we actually found they've only been out for less than a year. Uh, most of the units are really big and ugly, um, and they have to be set um, three to five feet off the wall, so three to five feet of air um, all the way around them, but those units only need to be six inches off the wall. Um, so they just hang on the wall like uh Exactly, yeah. and it's, it's not a plowing issue either, um, or much less so. Uh, that was my next uh, question. Uh, are these protected from uh, the travel way? I mean, I, it just uh, from this photo, it appears that folks going this way or, I mean, they could be damaged, I mean. They could. Um, there's no parking right there. The fire department is at the very end of that building, mm -hmm. the very end of that corner is where the um, they hook in for the water line. And this this is an electrical? That is. Yeah. CMP had us put it there. Um, <laughs> they wanted it underground. So um, has this been has this been looked over uh, through the chair, Jay? Has this been looked over by the code by code enforcement? And yes. So they they do have a certificate of occupancy. So in terms of building right. permit, um, uh, building safety and, and such, yes. They're okay. Yep. It, so it, I'm just kind of surprised that there wasn't a required maybe to put a couple of bollocks there or something just to keep, uh, you know, a, an accident from occurring and impacting the electrical or more so the electrical. I would think. I would think that was that's probably three phase power right there. Or? Oh yeah. That's yeah. Sure. So my two cents is I, I have no problem with what you've done, and I appreciate you coming back and illustrating everything for me. But and I don't want to add to your cost. Certainly, I enjoy you being here. I visit your store often. Um, but I think for everyone's sake, I might suggest that uh, consideration be made to somehow protect these units from uh, vehicular traffic, whether it be you know a, what do they call them bollard? oh, bollards, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, or the like. Yeah. But thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you. Nick? Just so I'm clear, I'm looking at your, your back photo here. Is, those, these are the units that you said that they need adequate ventilation and you, you really wouldn't like to put a fence around it? You I don't, I really don't want to. My HVAC guy says you really shouldn't. He doesn't know that much about them because they've only been out for less than a year, uh, and they're supposed to be okay with that, but he doesn't recommend it. Um, so I didn't want to do it. I will, you know, I'll do it. Um, I'll put the same kind of fencing up that I that I proposed for the back covering the dumpsters and all the mechanicals back there. Uh, we can do it. I was just thinking there's a, there's a style of fence that um, they're offset, so there's a board tier on this side of the. the Post and then one on this side. And that should, <coughs> I would believe, allow for enough air circulation as well as provide that visual deterrent that we're kind of talking about. Also, protect your expensive equipment. I'm not sure the town really cares that your coolers get clipped, um, but you might. <laughs> so it, it could it could benefit everyone here. Um, some some form of protection and, and visually on top of it. I think something like that could work. Uh, that would be my my thought in the matter. Um, other than that, so long. Thanks, Nick. Well, yeah, the only thing I'm going to add to my two colleagues is uh, the dumpster location. Yep. Has that been worked out? They are where they are right now. Um, in terms of, uh, do you mean like with Jim Butler? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'm just going to echo what my two colleagues to the left, I think so, something should happen also. And I understand the concern and <coughs> it's, a, it's a brand new type of equipment, but uh, we need to look at the big picture and that's what we're trying to do. 
and pass on to you. <coughs> and I agree, something needs to be enclosed there. You want it enclosed as much as well. Right. Similar to what Nick said. Some solution perhaps he talking allows about your your sorry. circulation, but yet you know provides a little bit of that visual. Yeah, we're not mechanical engineers, so I can't tell you what's going to work. Right. But well, they, they said, you know, if you're using a chain, uh, what do you call it, chain link fence, you're good to go. Otherwise, the slatted ones, the ones with the slatted, you put the thing through, this is, it, it's really all the same. It's going to restrict it. Um, if you're going to do it, he said, if you're going to do it, put the fence up. Okay. Whatever. <coughs> okay. Mike, did you want to add or well, I just I, I just want to... Um, I think we're talking slightly different things. I'm talking about protecting the equipment, and my colleagues appear to be talking about not only protecting it but also hiding it. So no, protecting it. Oh, okay. Protecting it. Then I I, I, I miss, you accomplish both. I misheard. Mm -hmm. You can accomplish both, but I'm not talking about hiding it. I'm talking about protecting it. Thank Thanks. you, Susan. I want it hidden. <laughs> I'm the I'm the hide it gal. I'm just suggesting that the suggestion that um, um, I'll get it, Nick made, I hadn't thought of it, but read the, 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 instead of being like this, they're staggered, so the wind, the breeze can blow through it. I mean, it's, it's designed on purpose so that it doesn't block all the breezes. Oh. I'd, like, I'd like to suggest that you at least check it out. And I'm, I don't, I mean, my husband's an HVAC engineer. I understand but. about, you know, you don't cut off the circulation. You just don't do it. But if there is something that can be done that allows the circulation to occur, I'd like you to look into that at least. Well, we have, and, and it, like I said, the HVAC guy said, and according to what the standards of, the, of this new unit is, we can put the fencing up. He just, okay. with the older units, he's okay. not comfortable with it because he doesn't know enough about it. But according to the standards of this new HVAC unit, you can put the fencing up. Okay, um, I don't, I, I'm not going to get caught up tonight on fencing. I'm just not. However, I would like to go on record as saying what you've done with this building is wonderful. I'm totally grateful that you're there. I come quite frequently. Everything about it is great. This part right here is enough to make the, the people who sold it to you cry, <laughs> you know? But I think that... Um, at some point, if you could at least consider putting a fence up once you've had the, uh, the unit long enough to know whether you're going to be endangering it or not. I don't know how we as a board have anything to say about that, but know it's a concern. Okay? Other than that, I'm all set. Thanks. Roger? Thanks. Um, I guess I would agree with Sue and Mike. Um, I, would, I would leave it alone right now because you're trying to you know, um, react to what your expert has told you you want to do. And this is the south side, which, from what I gather, there's no traffic around here anyways because your entrance is on the other side. Correct, sir. So unlike when it was the restaurant, there was a circulation, but there isn't really right now. Um, so this sounds to me like uh, it was a case regarding all this where you had your contractors come in and do various things, but they never told you you've got to go let somebody know that we're doing these things. Which is on us at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I uh, I don't really have any problems with any of this stuff. It, it makes sense to me, and I understand the situation. So. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll echo the sentiment that um, what you've done is outstanding, and it's great to have you there, and appreciate you coming back. Um, no, you're not. You're not general contractors, and you're not developers. No. Um, and sometimes those processes can kind of get away from you a little bit. Um, I do have a draft motion here for for the for the amended approval. Um, one of the one of the conditions does get to this question of screening the the chillers on that backside. Um, it sort of leaves open the ability to coordinate with staff and sort of figure out staff and others and sort of figure out what's the best way to achieve it. Um, so hopefully, you know, it's not, it's not something that's a, you know, a real onerous <coughs> mandate. Um, and then I, I would agree with the Mr. Wood that the, there's a separate question of protection and whether you might consider bollards there. Um, but that's something I think that 
again, is, is more your prerogative. Um, yes, Roger? Just a comment on the, um, if we're talking about the, um, the screening, primarily for aesthetic purposes, uh, couldn't you just put in just something perpendicular to the building? Because we're talking about basically as, a, as it appears from Route 1. Because I don't think anybody cares what it looks like from the back, do they? In other words, not have something that completely. In yeah, I guess I would I would file that under um, to be yeah to be discussed yeah. and figured out. But that's a yeah valid point. Okay. Um, so with that, I'll put this motion out, and I'll certainly welcome any any uh, tweaks that folks might want to recommend. I move to approve the site plan amendment application of On the Vine Marketplace for the amendments as presented in the materials dated January 15, 2016 with the following conditions. Number one, the dumpster enclosure fencing at the rear of the building will need to meet the fire department's requirement for an egress door and signage. Number two, the dumpster shall not be located within the 10, ten feet of the structure. And number three, screening shall be added to conceal the two refrigeration units on the southerly side of the building. Final details to be reviewed and approved by staff. That's the motion. We have a second. Any discussion? I'd like to ask staff if staff's comfortable with that. I think based on the direction of this discussion, I am. If, but again, I know there are board members who may differ with that. I assume you're referring to specifically <coughs> to the question about coordinating with staff. Yep. Right. Yeah. I think this right. Okay. Mike? Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not so convinced that screening needs to be needs to be done here. And cer certainly, like, if I was to uh, add a, uh, a bullet three to this motion, I would be more intent on having it speak of protecting the units and in particular the phase three power. And if that can be accomplished, as Nick had said a few moments ago, if that can be accomplished by both screening and protection, then fine, you know, but my interest is in the protection of those, of, the, of that infrastructure. Um, Secondary is my interest in the screening. This speaks to like th this tells me that the screening is the paramount concern. Um, so th those are my uh, my thoughts on it. Okay. I agree with you. <coughs> I think that's a yeah, it, it does make <coughs> imply something when we're both in talking about protection more than anything else. Yeah, I think that's a it's a good revision. So I don't know how to put that in an amendment. Um, yeah, today is giving, his, giving it his best. I could right struggle now. for it. Could I ask those those fans? The intake are ex exhaust. They're exhaust. They're exhaust. Mm -hmm. is there, I mean, is there a significant amount of blow coming from them? I mean, if you're walking so by, uh, you know, we <coughs> opened September 5th, and no, no, and no, I don't. Your foot traffic, I imagine. I mean, there is an entrance there. I don't know if it's utilized. It's, we lock it. So that's uh no one's really wandering. You'd enter around behind back there. like our deli counter point. Point. Right. Okay. Kind of indifferent. Okay. I think me and my nephew are the only ones that park on that side of the parking lot. <laughs> All right. Visually does not bother me. I mean, that's a personal taste. I just don't know how that complies with what we're talking about here for our standards. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think just for a point of reference, when staff flagged this as an issue, um, that's where the, the site plan ordinance and design standards sort of talk about shielding and screening these type of units. So that's where staff's comments were mm -hmm. generated. So I do think at this point, I would look for direction from the board because um, I think the third condition could read either, as it reads now, screening to be provided, and to me, the way I'm thinking of that is more in the line of the way Mr. McGee was speaking, maybe that offsetting fence or Working, working with the applicants to come up with some type of reasonable screening, um, then there seems to be another notion about eliminating the word screening and really talking about protective measures shall be added to um, to protect or something to that effect, the units in the CMP. Or there's sort of a maybe third hybrid to those protective measures and screening. So again, I, I would look for board direction on this. Well, the thing is that I would suspect code enforcement would have required them to protect the electrical had it been an issue. Right. Uh, and I, mean, and that I, think we, I don't think we should be making up standards for protection. We, that's do, we do it all the time. 
<laughs> oh, we should be. <laughs> um, I mean, that's what code enforcement's for. I mean, they write the code on what's. Uh, I mean, I mean, that's not. I understand what you're saying. That's, that's a lot of voltage, but <laughs> that's still. In case you get it. it anywhere. I, I think well, it's. A, I, I think it's a legitimate. I think it's legitimate um, requirement of the board, and I. I, I think for me, I. I keep in mind sort of the context and the history here that we've gone from what was an administrative approval and because of the way that the things actually came together it's now back in front of us and that sort of opens some other things up and I think we're I think we're being pretty uh, even-handed here and not really talking about imposing anything that's particularly on onerous um, so um, I and to Jay's comment, I, I personally, and, and I think at least one or two other board members, uh, agree that screening is something that we do want to accomplish here. Um, you know, this is at least to me. You know, this is a building that's it's a great it's great what you've done, but it, you know, it's a, it's a it's very exposed. There's not a whole lot there right now. Um, it's not like we're asking for a lot of landscaping or buffering or anything like that and I think this is a sort of a minimal measure to take to screen that equipment so um, I would propose that an, an amended motion with number three to read <coughs> protective measures and screening shall be added to conceal the two to protect and conceal the two refrigeration units on the southerly side of the building Final details to be reviewed and approved by staff. And, and the electrical, yeah. or <coughs> the, just the refrigeration units. Ah, uh, good. No, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. To conceal the two, to conceal the refrigeration units and and electrical right. equipment on the southerly side of the building. So that's an amended motion. I'll second the amendment. That's seconded. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? All right. Thank you. And thank you again. All right. Good luck. Thank you. As noted before, item number seven was tabled. Uh, item number eight. <coughs> Nonsuch River Brewing requests site plan review for 201 Gorham Road, Assessor's Map, R55, Lot 34. Jay? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let's see. This item was before the board uh, back in December as a sketch plan. Subsequent to that um, sketch plan meeting, the applicant has, uh, has been before staff as for a pre-application review. Um, so the applicant had benefit of one round of staff comments prior to putting their formal application together for the board. At this time, um, as board members will know from staff's comments, there's still the need for the applicant to secure a Department of Transportation Movement Permit, as well as a DEP Wetland Fill Permit, and I believe it's a Tier 1 permit, um, before the board will take final action. But the applicant, based on sketch plan comments, uh, previously had made some adjustments to their plan. So um, it's their intent to come before the board tonight to talk about the changes in the site, to be sure the board is comfortable with those directions, <coughs> and see if there are any other issues uh, to be addressed as they sort of work through these other uh, state and uh, uh, <coughs> permitting issues. Um, to that end, you'll have received staff comments, planning staff comments, as well as comments from Winter and Kern on uh, general engineering issues. You also received comments from Goral Palmer, who's acting as the town's peer review, uh, uh, traffic peer reviewer on this item. I will note that there is a uh, scoping meeting scheduled with the DOT, which staff will be attending, um, as will Goral Palmer on the town's behalf. Um, I think one other thing just to note um, for the board and, and folks in general, that uh, we are working to coordinate with DOT and the applicant to ensure that the, Gorm, the overall Gorham Road project where town's looking to, uh, to improve Mr. Gorham Road basically from Oak Hill up to Payne Road are well coordinated with this project um, and that those are ongoing discussions. Uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I would... Now we can also from the conservation, did you mention them? 
that's on a different item. Oh, is it? I thought that was on. Thanks, Jay. And I'll turn over the applicant. Great. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Lee Allen with Northeast Civil Solutions. I'm joined tonight by Chris Bacala, architect for the project from Custom Concepts. Um, also, Mike Schuler and Tim Boardman, um, the owners and developers of the restaurant. I um, want to take you quickly through um, the status of where we are. I think Jay mentioned some of this, but uh, we have submitted our NERPA Tier 1 permit for wetland fill and have been told that uh, we have approximately four to six weeks before the processing date is due. A lot of times they get that permit done ahead of that, but that's the schedule we're told at the moment. Uh, as Jay also mentioned, we have a DOT traffic movement permit. I believe we're scheduled for a meeting next, a week from this Wednesday. Um, and at following that meeting, we're going to follow up and have discussion about off-site road improvements, how we're going to actually construct them, what we need to construct, and, and kind of work out the logistics, knowing that the Gorham Road um, phase improvements are coming. Um, some of the changes, um, this is our site. We're just south of the um, eight corners intersection with um, Spring Street and Muzzy Road. Um, we're slightly over two acre site and there's a stream that bisects our property and all our development is on the Gorham Road side of that. Uh, you may recall previously our driveway was, was further to the south um, down next to that uh, residential house. There's a 25 foot buffer there. There's also um, a DOT drainage easement there. So we've shifted the driveway up closer to the building. Um, we think that works much better from access getting in and out. It doesn't interfere with the buffer or the landscaping. Um, we, if you recall, we also discussed the option of shrinking up the aisles to kind of compress the site so that we weren't pushed out into the wetland area. We did that and were able to pull that front edge of the parking back from the edge of Gorham Road or the right of way. 18 and a half feet, the requirement was we needed to make at least 15 feet, so we've succeeded in that. Um, I think other than that, it's, it's very similar. I, I know the, some of the big issues that were pointed out in the memo that we wanted to go over um, had to do with the number of seats that we're proposing in the restaurant and how they're going to be used and what the, the spaces in the, the restaurant were actually going to be used for. Um, there's a kind of overhang porch balcony upper deck area. Um, in the summer, we're certainly going to take advantage of using that for outdoor seating. Um, in the winter, our plan is to move those outdoor seats indoors and make it kind of a little more crowded inside during the winter months, um, but not to exceed uh, the number of seats. Um, I, I think really it's the parking is going to drive how, much, how many people can be in there, not necessarily the seats. So we don't just see that as being a problem, but that's kind of the ideas behind how we're going to use the space inside the building. I think with that, I'm going to turn it to Chris. He's going to go over the, uh, the architectural plan and be certainly happy to answer any questions afterward. Right now, 
an open plan for the brewery, so that double link space is on this end, uh, access in the back side, loading, uh, and the kitchen area, the open plan area, but access to the back. Okay, so we're going to That's all I have questions or okay. comments. Did you have anything else? No? Okay. Um, before we turn to board discussion, we do have the opportunity for a public comment on this. So if anyone would like to uh, get up and uh, say anything, just limit it to five minutes. Come on up and introduce yourself. <laughs> Come on up, up to the podium, please. Thank you. I submitted a letter this afternoon. Do you have a copy of that? Yes, we do. Okay, so you are Shirley Curry? I am Shirley Curry. And your address? 91 Muzzy Road. 91 Muzzy Road. Thank you. My property backs up to this piece of property. Right. Yes. Shall I just read what I wrote? You can say whatever you want. Okay. Within <laughs> reason. I <laughs> yeah, within reason. Within reason. reason. Within, reason. Oh, <laughs> within five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this is family hour. All right. All right. I received a registered letter recently about the possibility of a brew pub, restaurant, and brewery on the Gorham Road, fairly close to Eight Corners. Said property backs up to my property, and I am very incensed that this type of establishment would be located here. The thought of a bar being next to my property is unthinkable, and I could plan that, and I could plan some type of residential pro project in that area, because my property is zoned R2. This bar would be in a current residential area with four homes on one side, two homes on the other side, 0.2 miles from an active church, 0.4 miles from an elementary school. I just feel that uh, this kind of establishment would not uh, be a good use of this area. I would not like to see eight corners uh, go in this direction. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening. Um, my name is Tian Vu. I uh, I am living at the uh, 205 Gorm Road, the which is the uh, adjacent property north of this uh, uh, property here. Uh, I'm here just to uh, ask you during the review process that you would keep. Uh, this in mind that uh, currently there's an existing residential uh, neighborhood. Um, there are resident, uh, uh, residential homes adjacent to this property. So I just, um, and that I would ask uh, you to have careful considerations on the level of outside uh, noise, lightings, um, uh, any order that, that may come out of the brewery and um, buffering requirements. Um, when I speak about buffering requirements, I would, um, I would like to ask you to kind of um, give a uh, uh, um, kinda, um, good consideration on the uh, adequate uh, buffering, like buffering amenities um, that would add um, um, immediate uh, buffering, uh, like some kind of fencing that would give uh, immediate um, buffering so that uh, I don't have to deal with what I have to, um, you know, to see my next door, like cars and parking spaces. And it's going to be a huge parking lot and, and, and uh, because I'm, you know, I'm li living in a residential home and this is uh, certainly a, a business uh, and it's going to definitely impact um, where I live. Um, And um, on the second part of it is that um, I, I, I'm not sure if um, the new owner is aware of that, but um, uh, I would like to mention on the uh, uh, sewer line connection uh, because when I, I um, originally uh, purchased uh, my land uh, from um, Mr. Joseph Nabi, who is the former owner of this property, and at the time um, uh, there was no... Um, to a uh, outlet that I can connect to to run it to my home. 
So I had to, uh, and it, it was required by the town, um, 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 the sanitary district, that uh, uh, I would have to connect to the public sewer line, and because there's no outlet in front of property, so I had to go um, to use the closest uh, outlet, which is right in front of uh, the north corner um, of, of the property, just right where right where it's pointed now. And and I, I, I got an easement from uh, Mr. Nappy uh, just to run the sewer line to connect to that um, sewer outlet. So uh, as I understand that, the um, um, there's only one outlet per user, so I'm not sure how the new owner is going to address the sewer, sewer connection. Um, so I would like to understand and uh, um, aware of that. And lastly, I would um, <coughs> would uh, want to mention again earlier that um, because um, this is a ne residential neighborhood, and right now um, there's uh, adjacent residential homes, and, and definitely my home is going to be impacted. And since my home was built prior to this area uh, got rezoned to TVC3. So, um, and I would ask that uh, the uh, building setback um, to be 25 foot setback. Right now, for, uh, from seeing at the, uh, uh, the the plan, it is at, um, I believe, 15 foot setback. And I feel that it is, would be appropriate for the residential home, uh, for the business to um, have a setback as 25 foot instead of 15. Um, so, uh, so that's in closing. I just want to you to all our board members to cons to have a careful considerations and and hope that um, what what your decision is would uh, protect um, where um, my property is and also um, um, protect uh, my way of life that has been. Um, uh, going on for the past uh, uh, 14 years uh, since I first uh, moved uh, and built this, uh, my home there. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, seeing none. Good to start on this side this time, Susan. Sure. Um, as I said during the last meeting we had, I have very conflicting emotions on this. Half of me is saying, wow, a beer brewery in Scarborough. Isn't this the coolest thing? We've been waiting a long time for this, and I don't want to do anything to discourage it. However, somebody in the group, I'm not sure which one of you, said that essentially parking is going to be driving the use of this restaurant. And I think that that's it in a nutshell. It's going to be hugely popular and your parking is not going to, um, it's not going to handle it. <coughs> so you're either going to be serving miserable food and miserable beer, and your parking is not going to be a problem, or you're going to serve great beer and great food, and you're going to have a huge parking problem. There's not, you know, I mean, by, by the paper, it's okay. But I can guarantee you, you're going to have a parking problem. And I would like to have something addressed as to what you're going to do when you've got a parking problem. Because there's very, there's, there can be no on-street parking, there's no overflow parking, you've got a river, a, a, an unnamed stream right behind you, and I am a water quality person big time. So, you know, there's going to have to be all kinds of things done to protect that stream. There's not going to be an inch to give up for parking. I think it's the number one issue you've got. I, I think, if I can interrupt, I think we have a preliminary solution, something we've been talking about as an option. There's a church around the corner, and there's a potential to work out some sort of parking agreement where we do kind of valet parking and move the cars over there, have the employees park over there. Um, we realize that that could be an issue, and we'd have to have an agreement. Okay. That, that might work. Yeah, but I have a real hard time sitting on the planning board granting permission to build a restaurant knowing that there's, no, wait a minute, there's not going to be enough parking. And the solution is going to be to valet park at a local church. 
I'm sorry, but it's just, it just doesn't make any sense to me at all. And, and remember, it doesn't always have to be a beer brewery. You know, if you're really successful, you're going to want to go someplace else and big something, build something bigger in a place where you can have more parking. So I'm thinking long term here, right? And I don't think this is adequate. I mean, you, 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 the, the proof is in the pudding. So that's our contingency plan, but right now, based on the square footage we have and the seats, we meet the letter of the law. I know. That's what I'm saying. You do, but you're going to have a problem. Um, my, I, I hope uh, we do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I hope you don't have the one I'm, I'm anticipating you're going to have. The buffering is a very huge issue. Thank you for coming and addressing us. It's a huge issue. I was part of the um, Long Range Planning Committee that worked with the town on coming up with rezoning this land to begin with, and we, we knew that it was going to be an opportunity for creating a different kind of environment out there, but it's got to be done in a class way. So we're going to be looking very closely at yeah. what your buffering is going to be. Um, I'm glad this is not where we're going to be giving you any kind of preliminary approval tonight because I still <laughs> want to see these kinds of you know, the parking things. Yeah. And then this is, I, I own this, okay? This is personal to me because I don't want you to think I think you're a terrible architect because I don't. But I have such a hard time looking at that and really knowing what the relative proportion of that roof is. I can see the car. That helps. But if I'm... But what, let somebody stand there and show me where is the residential house that's going to be abutting this? Where is it going to be abutting it? Which side? Back side. The back side. Okay. Yeah, that's not. In there. There's there's some people in there, but uh, it's, yeah, it was it was an attempt to, to show you that. Why is it so tall? Uh, just because it can be? Uh, it's the roof. I mean, it's the 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 proportions of the roof are what we started with is the 12 12 pitch, and and to kind of give the the first story space a okay. bit of openness inside. Is like I say, I own it. It's my thing. I think it's out of character. I think it's out of proportion to what else is going on in the neighborhood. And I say that with a caveat because I have a real hard time telling from these things. Mm -hmm. Some people, when they bring in, um, um, I'm trying to say, landscaping plans, will do it in such a way that you get a real good proportion, sense of proportion. Yep. If this is a real good sense of proportion, then it's not proportioned well for where it's going to be. Yep. No, I understand. Those are my comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Roger? Thank you. <coughs> uh, not to disagree with Sue, but I like the building. <laughs> I like yeah. the way it looks. Um, and um, I think I, I'm also impressed that there's actually elm trees on this property. I, I thought there were no more elm trees anywhere, so that's good. Um, but I do think... Um, one other comment, too. As far as I'm concerned, if I was going to a restaurant and there was no parking spots left, I would just go to another restaurant. I, I, you know, I mean, that's <laughs> what I would do. So um, if, if the parking meets what we require it to be, I don't think that's going to be an issue. I think people just, if they can't find a spot, they're just going to go someplace else. Um, I think we do have to be very sensitive to the abutters, though. And, for instance, I noticed on, on your plans, um, on where Mr. – is it you? Um, you have Avervides there, I think. Mm -hmm. And on the other – or the other side here, you have white pines. And it, to, to me, I, I, I think you should do as much as you can do to protect their – their privacy and everything, and I would think the white pines would be better than the Abervites because they're going to grow. You know, I, I'm familiar with the white pines on Pleasant Hill Road, where you know where the um, recycling place is. Yes. You're familiar with yep. those? Yes. And they really create a nice buffer, and uh, and they and they grow tall and full and everything. And, um, so I would be very. I think you got to be very sensitive to that, and on. Regarding um, Miss, Miss Curry, um, that's all wooded and everything in the back there, right? She's she's the tree, the tree line is right in here. Yeah, that's yeah. that's going to be all wooded and underbrush and everything else, right? We're not going over there. We're not disturbing that. Yeah. Um, 
And the only other comment I'd say is this is a TVC zone, and there's going to be, it's designed for mixed development. There could be some commercial development. There could be residential. I mean, that's the idea behind it. It's an old-fashioned type neighborhood where you could have a convenience store and things like that. So I think that's what, you know, I don't know. I don't have any other comments, I guess, at this point. Thanks, Roger. Roger, Ron? Yep. I find it interesting that that there's a deal that may be made with the church, so obviously the church is not opposed to the... It hasn't been formalized, but it's in the planning stages. And I don't know if anybody on the board has been to Portland, but there's no parking in any of the restaurants in Portland, and a lot of them have valet parking, which I have utilized on numerous occasions. So if there's obvious valet, I think people who really want to go to the facility will take up the idea of valet parking. I don't have any problem with that whatsoever. A couple of things, though. One of the things that hits me, and you've got to describe this because I have a little familiarity with microbreweries, is that this is going to be a combination microbrewery and restaurant, right? Correct. Is 5,000 square feet enough to satisfy all that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually floor, floor space. It's it's broken up, so there's, give me the exact, it's uh, 4,464 square feet of brewing space, which is basically the basement level and that, that level that extends open to the area above. Mm -hmm. And restaurant space is 4,080 square feet of restaurant space. So what you say the brewery was? 4,464. Yeah, the, the footprint... Uh, which is essentially the brewery. It's the 4,400 square feet brewery proper, separate out. And then the restaurant, what, what did you have for that? 4,080. Yeah. So the total is 8,000 something. Right. We're talking footprint space. These are different in actual usable, leasable square footage areas. Okay. Okay. All right. That makes me feel a little better than 5,000 for just the whole, whole thing. Uh, and with that, um, as staff noted, that if they're going to use uh, the outside port deck during the summer, then then calculations for parking need to be in order. I don't know exactly what the numbers are, but so it's all based on seating. So <coughs> it's a matter of whether you have indoor seating in the winter or you take that seating and move it outdoor in the in the summer. It's still 142 seats. It's just where the seats are. And the idea is, in the summertime, it's going to everyone's going to want to sit on the porch, so that's where the seating will be maximized. And not like that will be added to the total. Right. right. Is that okay, Jay? I think that's need a discussion the board needs to have. I know in the past um, there's an example where the board yeah, has, getting, yeah. has has um, worked with the applicant and, and come to a careful understanding of what that would look like, and that's down at the Higgins um, Beach Inn um, when they added their deck space. This is going back a number of years, but that was sort of the discussion around that because they did have similar si situation with limited parking. So, um, yeah, I think there's a couple of nuanced points that uh, the zoning would permit if the board's comfortable. I think this is one. I think the other issue you've touched on is the square footage. Again, it, it's really the ordinance talks about limiting the square footage of a unit of occupancy. So essentially what the applicants are, and, and our, we have a definition of what a unit of occupancy is. So. Though one, though these entities are being talked about as one, they're really going to have to be it's two separate leasable areas. And if they meet that definition, then <coughs> they meet that definition. So it's, again, it's right. a um, it's a nuance, but it is what the ordinance allows. If you recall, we did a similar thing at just up the street at uh, 62 Muzzy Road at the Asian Fusion Restaurant. That was a mixture of office space and restaurant space. Um, this is similar where you have a separate entrance for the brewery. It's totally separate from the restaurant. Even though one can see into the other, they're separate and distinct entities. Okay. Again, initially that didn't, wasn't clear to me. Now I have a clear understanding of that. Um, in light of that, as we heard from the tenant, has there been discussions with the sewer and water department that there's adequate flow that's going to uh, th there's 
no question about the flow. The whole service thing is something that just came to light in the staff memo that I got late last week. Um, I'm sure that's something we can work through based on what we have out there. I'm very confident that we can get the sewer situation resolved. Okay, and I'll address one of the other, the setback. Uh, is it a 15 as it's now and not Correct. 25? Correct. Because there's 25 when it changes zones. So the TVC 3 zone ends on our property to the south, but the property to the north is also TVC 3 zoned. So in that case, it's 15 foot setback, structure setback. It's 15 feet to the south, but it's a 25 foot landscape buffer because it's a change in zone used from TVC 3 to residential. Okay. Um, and of course, uh, you going to come back with all of the stormwater management. I've, I've read hmm. through some of the stuff, but I can't. It's, it's mostly been addressed to this point. But. Okay. Enough said. Um, I think that there are some other minor details that I have concerns about, but nothing that needs to be mentioned <coughs> at this moment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Nick? Yeah, thank you. Um, okay. So there is a 15 foot setback on uh, Mr. Vu? Correct. That's a 15 foot setback side. The other side of the property, there was a 25 foot setback. It, it's still 15 foot setback, but there's a 25 foot Landscape buffer back. because of the change in zone. Yeah. Just on that other side of the property, Correct. though. So, um, what I can see here, though, you're still having a problem keeping within the 15-foot buffer with this design. Is that correct? I see I three didn't parking think so. spaces, four parking spaces. Parking, I believe, you're allowed to go to within 10 feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the 15-foot is a building setback issue. Not, okay, so not on the building. But back there. correct. Okay. No, but there are just just for the board um, as a. Recognizing this an issue you're working through that you know the standards do sort of talk about there are screening standards again Sort of like right. we talked about with the last <laughs> so the board Depending on what you feel is necessary as Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of mechanicals it looks like on that side of the building. Yeah, so I, I could tell you we're going to be adding a, a fence as long as bumping up the landscaping in that on that side um, All right, and then the visual that you have over there has got one Cupola one. And then in my packet, I've got three on this. If we uh, could we come to a decision well, on what that's going to look like? <coughs> one is, is what we're hoping for. I size it a little bit larger and face it on. You know, again, trying to face it on the New England barn aesthetic, and and if we feel the proportions are, are correct. And you know, trying to be not so commercial, trying to be in, in more in the New England aesthetic. And, and not come off as, as too stodgy, but we think the one is, is what we want to go. Okay. And I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow Susan here, and I think I mentioned it last time, which is I think my bigger problem is the visual impact of that roof as you go by. That's enormous. Mm -hmm. And I think the other hurdle I'm really having trouble getting over, and this is more of a personal vendetta of mine, I hate metal roofs. So to see that much metal roof, as I'm driving by on Route 1, really kind of bothers me. And I don't know how it, it, it would, with our design standards in that area, whether or not, you know, we try to aim for that New England, and I see the barn style here, yeah. which is great. I just don't know if there's another solution to break it up. That is so much metal roof. I mean, it's so much metal roof. Is You know, is instead of cupola, is there, you know, somebody put in the middle there on the roof side to break It's just a lot of metal roof. It just drives me personally I mean um, anyways so that would be my other thought on on that yeah. you know is is that something you know, <laughs> it's a personal and like I said it's a personal issue I have with metal roofs it's just a lot to look at from row one um, and I can tell you worked very hard to squeeze everything you possibly could into this plan I mean there's just no unused space so um, a way to maximize a property um, You've got where I think uh, I'm not the same, but as wrong. There's, there's little things, but all in all, it looks like you're making the best of the situation. I just I'm going to echo what the residents have said, which is you. I think making sure you take every precaution necessary to make sure that your your butters are satisfied at the end of the day, because this is it's a proposal and and. Maybe it's zoned this way, but it is residential right now. 
and, and I know you're zoned to be able to go in there, but I, I think just making sure that you respect the abutters and this is, is huge going forward every step of the way. And hopefully you'll maybe even reach out to them to see, um, you know, what it is you can do to help allay some of their fears, I think would, would be helpful just from a, this perspective. That's, that's all I really have at this point. Thanks, Nick. Mike? <laughs> Thanks, Corey. Um, on the design of the building, I, I, it appears to be fine with me as it exists, uh, but you did have three cupolas before, did you not? Yes. Yeah. That, that got one. Yeah. Now, if you, if you add a cupola, you said the purpose of adding the cupola was to kind of break up the mass. Right. Is it then safe to say adding three breaks it up even more? Well, I mean, it, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't know. It's almost a little too much. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Maybe two is the answer, right? Yeah. But, um, you know, it's, it's a, a lot of the I think it's more important that the cupola be sized correctly, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, we've, that, we've talked a bit about uh, <coughs> this being the TBC zone, and you do fit the criteria for use in that zone. But I think for all intents and purposes, you're the first one in, really. So um, in the middle of a neighborhood, the intent of having that buffering, increasing buffering between zones, is obvious. So although you meet the criteria, 25 feet between zones, 15 feet with your neighbor who's in the same zone, but the use is much different. Um, and like Nick said, you've maximized this property, it appears, but I'm not an engineer. So I, I would ask that you know maybe you can, maybe you can increase a little bit more buffering between the, uh, the um, the, uh, the individual to your uh, north. Then, yes. Um, we talk about buffering, of course, and you're going to be very liberal and very generous in buffering, I would imagine. The plan yes. indicates you are. Yeah, uh, and I think we're going to go back and revisit that and also look at a fence, stockade-type fence along that property and, line. And, fen and fencing is fine, too, except that two, three, four years later, when snow gets pushed up against it or other mishaps, a fence ends up being... It takes on the opposite effect. It just ends up being an eyesore. Yeah. So um, I think the board often has uh, elected to use things like split rail or whatever, but that doesn't do a lot with shielding. Training, right. Um, so I'd be interested to see what yeah. what kind of ideas come out of on your next trip back on those kinds of discussions. Uh, again, if you can increase a little bit more of the buffering, I, th I don't think anyone would argue against that. Um, the snow... I see on, on the neighbor to the um, to the south side, it shows a proposed tree line. Uh, is proposed meaning to say it, it does it exist? So, what's going to happen is there's a ditch there now that's in poor shape. We need to regrade that ditch. When we regrade that ditch, some of the vegetation can be taken down. So what we're going to do is plant back to build back that tree line when we put the landscaping back. Is the current tree line mature or? It's in there. It's, it's kind of brushy. It's, okay. it's been, you, you can tell it's been used as a ditch for road runoff. It's directed off of Gorham Road down through there into the, into the stream. And, and, and the elevation of the uh, parking lot to this, um, this abutter, is it? Um, when you get down at that point, it's just about at grade, if not a little bit below grade currently. Because okay, I was thinking about runoff issues, because you, you have a note here that where it might be uh, used as snow storage also. So Right. So we're going to drain that front parking lot through uh, a treatment swale that's located between the parking lot and Gorham Road, and that runoff will run in that ditch basically down and utilize that DOT swale and, and wrap around back towards the stream. Okay. And the snow storage isn't a concern as it melts, and, and, and would, would it move off into? It, a lot of it would go through that treatment swale anyway, any snow that's there. So the storage will be on the paved area? No, it's just off, but that whole area between... between will it capture it all? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's stone check tams in there too. As it melts, it's going to go through that. Okay. Uh, lighting. I see your photometrics, and it suggests that uh, along the um, along the periphery there is 
Zero. Correct. That candle power. That, that that's our plan. Okay. Um, there's no plans for any outdoor speakers. Not that I'm aware of. No. Table ready. That kind of stuff. Don't like that. Uh, I think that's important being in a neighborhood like that. Uh, natural gas is being brought to this location. Yeah, for brewing beer, um, my understanding from the applicants, they, they use a, a substantial amount of energy per year, and mm -hmm. their discussions with the gas company, I, I believe, has been successful, and that they're willing to run it down there based on the amount of gas they'll be using per year. Um, I, I'm, I wonder if um, that might mitigate some some of the abutters, because I know I wish I could have natural gas run across the front of my uh, frontage, but I, how far will it go? Just to this property? And Correct. And it'll come from a corners area? Uh, Muzzy Road, I believe. Mm. Um, the connection for the sewer, did we already talk about yeah. that? That's that's uh, a, a new wrinkle, but we've been talking with them. We've already talked to them about how we're going to deal with uh, brewery waste. Um, it's a matter of, of dotting the I's and crossing the T's at this point and working out the details. But your connection to the sewer? It, there's a stub already onto the site. It's yeah. already there. It's beyond the, uh, I mean, the, uh, one of the abutters talked about right and we've got that's something that just I didn't know, know about until late last week so we're in process of working through that um, the individual indicated they had an easement would that easement be on what you otherwise are showing as not maybe not showing it on this yeah I think it's something that uh, slipped through when, when we did the boundary survey we did not pick that up all right um, I, I agree with uh, some of the comments that have been made, all the comments really that have been made already. In, in particular, parking. Parking is going to be tight. Yeah. We do meet the requirements. Um, even though we like to think that we're uh, well versed in a lot of these uh, these guidelines. I mean, I, I even raise my eyebrows when I see that uh, the requirement for one uh, for four seats is one space. And I think back, how many folks are arri how, how many times do four people arrive in the same car? You know, not often. Um, and so I do wish you could add more parking, but uh, it doesn't appear that you'll be able to. Um, but any other ideas you have along that subject is certainly yeah. going to be welcome, in, including the um, the um, way you can fit into this existing residential area, even though it is TBC. I think you made a motion. It appeared to me like this was really the first example of our rezoning. It, can I be corrected on that? Was there something else that occurred? The, the at 62 Muzzy Road, which is also okay, TBC yes. three. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's a quarter of a mile away. But it is. This but is more. Uh, we understand. We're right, in right. the middle of where residences were previously. Right. Where the other one had some business. Yeah, it was side. pretty much already established. Right. Though. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Well, uh, uh, I appreciate you coming and showing what you have, and uh, look forward to your next uh, visit. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ron. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. But one other thing. Uh, sidewalk. Qualify for me what the intent is as far as sidewalk is right. concerned. So, and this is, we haven't uh, formally agreed, but I think Jay's idea in the memo is, is a good one, is that, that we don't actually construct a sidewalk at this point because we don't know where Gorham Road is going to be, but we make a contribution for constructing sidewalk along our frontage so that <coughs> when the time comes, said sidewalk is constructed in the right location. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, I want to first thank those who spoke from the public. It's always good to get that input. Um, we absolutely understand and appreciate the concerns about this type of use going into this type of location. As has been pointed out, um, this use is allowed under the current zoning, the TVC3. That said, as Mr. Wood and others have pointed out, um, the, the fact on the ground is that this would be um, sort of in a residential neighborhood. So. Um, We'll definitely, I'll add my voice to those saying that I will really encourage you to continue to take that to heart, um, explore whether you can um, increase the setback uh, to the north from, from 15 to 25, um, and really look hard at different zoning and screen, uh, buffering and screening measures, including fencing and, and landscaping. Um, as has been pointed out, parking is going to be a huge driver here, so to speak, um, and if the initial reaction on sort of social media and in response to the local news reports after your first appearance here are any indication, there is a lot of pent-up demand, um, and people are already, you know, queuing up uh, almost to, to get in there and wondering when it's going to open, so 
Uh, I think we all agree that would be a, a good problem to have if, if this does go forward, and we wish it nothing but success. Uh, but that does mean that we are going to be looking closely at the traffic impact study when that comes comes to us. Um, we'll want to see what additional thoughts you might have on parking and circulation. Um, it's certainly the applicant's prerogative, given the zoning, to maximize the build out um, to, the, to the letter of the law. Uh, but we we do need to be mindful of, of the impacts and, and, the, and the context here. Um, and speaking of, of, of the context, I, I don't know that it's, I don't think it's been brought up tonight, but um, there have been references to the fact that there is an ongoing uh, effort underway to, um, uh, to design an improved uh, Gorham Road corridor there. And so I just encourage you to continue to, to, to factor that into your thinking. Um, one of the comments by our traffic peer reviewer um, was that the proposed left turn lane design be superimposed on the Gorham Road design to ensure that they will not conflict. Um, and that the left turn lane is something else that we haven't really talked about specifically tonight. Yeah, and I, I think I purposely did that because we haven't had the scoping meeting yet. Sure, so I sure. think we need to dig into that a little bit further until we know. Yeah, and I don't want to get too far out ahead of things, but just to kind of set the stage for next time, um, that kind of falls yeah. under the heading of traffic and, and parking, which is, again, a big driver here. Um, uh, staff had uh, noted as well that we'll want to make sure that we have a good handle on the location placement of mechanicals. That seems to be a recurring theme lately um, on uh, projects that are... They're, they're not going on the roof. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. The Whether on the roof and, and if, they're, if, they're, if they're on the ground, how they're screened, how they're yep. protected, all that, all that. So, um, one thing that was noted in in uh, some of the comments that has not been discussed, there were some, there are a few questions or comments about landscaping and screening in general, but I don't think um, we had specifically talked about the landscaping along Gorham Road uh, edge of the property, and specifically the concern that. Um, that it's a fairly steep grade there, and that we just want to make sure that yep. that's taken into consideration as you really flesh out the landscaping plan. That that the, whatever goes there can really thrive there and and make sense given that topography. Um, you know that you're exploring the sewer connection issue. Um, in terms of land uh, architecture, um, I actually like the design. Um, I. I I completely understand the concerns about scale and whether we're going to be overwhelmed by that roof. Um, but I think there's a tendency sometimes with these renderings to, um, for some certain things to get exaggerated a little bit. Um, if it's possible to, to, and I know you've you've tried to do your best to this point, but if it's possible to um, provide us with renderings that provide a little bit more context yeah. um, with with regard to the, the road as well as the abutters and some of the surrounding trees and such, that would be helpful. Um, but again, I don't have an issue with the architecture. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not exactly like what's there, which to me is fine. Um, and I see metal roofs all over New England, um, and I, I don't personally have a, an issue with that. Um, so with that, I think we've pretty well touched on all the all the big issues. Is there anything more you need from us at this stage? Yep. You brought that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Item number nine, Martins Point Healthcare requests site plan review for 153 U.S. Route 1, Assessor's Map U47, Lot 92. Jay? Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, see, board members uh, will likely recall this application. It's been before you on a couple of occasions at this point and been through an, a few rounds of staff review comments. Uh, most recently, it was before you at your last meeting, in which uh, board members uh, talked about a, a number of issues, including the uh, general layout of the site and the building. Um, and based on, on the comments, that we heard from the board and the modifications that the applicant has made. Staff really only has a few remaining comments. 
One is just to, uh, as the board works through this, recognize that the applicant is requesting to take advantage of one of the allowances in our parking standards that does allow for uh, multiple uses that are on one site to share parking. Um, so they are seeking um, some allowance or uh, consideration of that matter, um, which uh, it seemed like at the last meeting staff uh, board was prepared to um, support, but that is one thing we still need to just ensure we address. Um, stormwater, we've been going through an ongoing stormwater review. Our town engineers here, if there are any specific questions, Warder and Kern has also provided a round of review comments. At this point, we're relatively satisfied that they've um, made some really good progress and that this item is, um, the remaining comments can pretty readily be addressed um, uh, as conditions of approval of the board so sought fit. Um, so with that, um, uh, I guess I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Um, staff has, again, provided a draft motion with uh, considerations of conditions should the board be so inclined. Thanks, Jen. I'll turn over the applicant. Okay. I'm going to turn this. I haven't had luck with this in the last few meetings, so I'll just turn this around just to orient everyone to where we are on the site. So uh, Route 1 to the bottom of the page, um, Lois's would be directly across. It, it is a signalized entrance. The new facility uh, here, uh, Prime Auto Group, in this location, their new parking lot. Uh, it does <coughs> have a one-way drop-off coming into the site, internal circulation within the parking lot, um, good pedestrian access in the island and at the front of the building, uh, landscaping along Route 1. It does come into the right-of-way as we discussed at a previous meeting. Uh, the project sign has been uh, shifted back and shortened to meet ordinance requirements. You do have a new sign in your packet. Um, lighting has been addressed as noted. Um, there are house side shields. Uh, there is no lighting trespass. Um, and, and the landscaping around, even though it's not tremendous, it is good. Um, so um, I would like to answer any questions that we have. Um, and we did receive uh, staff's comments. We did email our responses um, uh, earlier today. Um, if you don't have those, we are prepared to respond to them. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, first, if there's anyone in the audience who'd like to make any comments, now is the time. <coughs> All right, seeing none, we'll go to the board. Mike? I don't have much to add from our last meeting. Um, looking forward to seeing, uh, seeing it built. Me too. And um, it's nice to see that that uh, lot was uh, realized uh, so quickly. Um, I'm looking at your, uh, since you're here, I'll ask you, otherwise I'd spend five minutes looking for it, but where, where is the uh, sign being placed on the lot? Uh, the sign is just a little bit past, so there is a project sign here. We're actually just a little bit more interior to the site. Okay, good, because I know we had some discussions back and forth, I think, where, and I, I'm right. pleased to see that it's favoring, <coughs> as we look at the plan on the left side, because I know Prime is building a... Uh, right, if a you look on, on sheet four of 11... Yeah you will see that where that location is. I do. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Yeah. I don't have anything to add, and I'm uh, comfortable, Mr. Chairman, with the motion as drafted. So Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Nick? I like what I see, and I'm comfortable with the motion as drafted. All right, thank you. Ron? Uh, yeah, um, likewise. My only comment was... Uh, the snow situation. Has that been cleared up? It has, and I apologize. It wasn't in the packet. We did bring uh, copies of plans showing the snow storage, but generally uh, where the snow storage is is in the southern area, or I'm sorry, northern area in this area, um, and then we did have localized in the islands. Um, it should be adequate for what we need. And since I'm not an engineer, I'm going to ask Angela, are you okay with what you've been exposed to as far as this project is concerned? For, for in general? Yeah. We're talking about snow storage still. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, I think we, we had a lot of concerns and comments about stormwater, and I think they've addressed the big concerns. I think there's just um, a handful of minor tweaks that, that staff needs to work through with them, but it's, um, I think it's adequate at this point for the stormwater concerns we had originally. And then... Um, Snow storage was a concern with originally going in some areas where the BMPs were being placed, but as it is now, it's not a concern where they've moved things around. So 
I'm sorry. Okay, so you think everything is workable? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. That's all I have. Thank you. Susan? I think we should sit here all the time. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. It's wonderful to have her here and to be able to say, you know, what do you think? We, it's just a nice addition to what happens. So I agree that, with you, sir. Let's check that off. <laughs> I also have no, you know, I mean, there are things I would tweak a little differently, but the landscaping is tremendous. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's just, actually, I did, I, I went and I parked my car. Mm -hmm. Who else does this? Right? <laughs> Had on my muck boots. And I walked around on the side between you and Prime. Mm -hmm. And if you do what you say you're going to do, it's going to turn what is in a miserable situation <laughs> into something that's really outstanding. Oh, so good. thank you for making that effort. Sure. If, if you, if you um, maintain it, which I know you will, yes, it's going they to be will. a wonderful addition to Route 1. I think so thanks so. for all your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Roger? Uh, thanks. Uh, I, I agree with everybody's comments so far. I think the building looks terrific. I think you've done a great job with the site. I think the building is very complementary to the um, prime motorship this building mm -hmm. right next door to it. So I think it's going to be um, a great addition to that section of Route 1. Thank you. Uh, likewise, I'm very happy with, with the outcome here. I don't really have any, any issues at this point. Um, I also think it's great that this is the site's being turned around so quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, and thank you for, for all your work and responsiveness on it. Um, and with that, I will uh, read the motion. I move to approve the application of Martins Point Healthcare represented by Sebago Technics under Chapter 405 Zoning Ordinance and Chapter 405B Site Plan Review Ordinance with the following finding, findings, waivers, and conditions. Findings. Martins Point Healthcare proposes to redevelop property located at 153 U.S. Route 1. The site is approximately 1.91 acres and is located within the Town and Village Center Zoning District. The redevelopment includes a 16,864 square foot building consisting of approximately 14,864 square feet of medical office space and 2,000 square feet of community meeting space. The site improvements also include parking, walkways, fire access drives, landscaping, stormwater infrastructure, facilities for alternative transportation, and related amenities. The Planning Board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design of the site plan adequately addresses the site plan review ordinance, zoning ordinance, and design, standards require, design standard requirements for site utilization and layout access internal vehicular movement, pedestrian ways, landscaping, stormwater management, architecture, signage, utilities, and storage. Further, the board has considered the variable time of probable maximum use between the two on-site activities, medical office and community space, and finds that 69 spaces will substantially meet the intent of the town's parking requirements. There are two waivers. Number one, based on the existing site conditions and the evidence provided by the applicant, the board waives the requirement to maintain a 15-foot streetscape buffer strip along the Route 1 frontage. And two, based on the evidence provided by the applicant, the board finds that a 24-foot aisle width is sufficient to provide safe internal circulation through the parking field. Conditions of approval. Number one, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall A, execute and record the maintenance agreement required by the Post-Construction Stormwater Infrastructure Management Ordinance, B, provide revised plans to address comments in planning staff's memo related to conflicts within the access easement area and plan notes. C, provide revised plans to address issues raised in Woodard and Curran's memo dated January 22, 2016. Condition number two, a pre-construction meeting is required before the start of construction. The meeting shall include appropriate, appropriate town staff the developer and his contractor, and utility company representatives if applicable. The pre-construction meeting may be scheduled in coordination with the senior planner. Number three, the final location and design of the bus shelter pad is to be refined as necessary with the staff of the planning department. And number four, the applicant is to work with the planning department and the property owner on easement language and documentation that may be necessary. That is the motion. Second. Any discussion? Um, 
If I might, Mr. Chair, uh, could we understand a little bit the conflicts in the easement um, condition of approval? Which number four? Mm -hmm. um, it was the, um, I think it was item B, conflicts within the easement. Uh, the 1B. Yep. If, if I may. Yes, Jay. Yep, that, that's the, um, uh, the tree filter box in the middle of the easement that yep. we had talked about moving to one side or the other. Yeah, we um, did, in the comments that we gave you, we did look at it, um, and there's two scenarios that we could pursue. Uh, one would be to shorten the easement in order to allow for a minor shift of the tree box, because as you know, that all that drainage is going into that filter right there. Um, so that we could shorten it, the easement, just to give just enough to create an aisle width. Um, we could identify that that tree filter gets moved as part of, because the way the grading is going, that whole area would drain if the easement were connected and drainage would then run down further, so the relocation of the tree filter would make sense. Uh, if we pull it out to Route 1, the grading is going to impact the bus shelter and the landscaping that we're proposing. So if I might suggest, you know, we can certainly continue to work with staff, but if we are going to have a condition, I just want to make sure that it's not a burden to change the entire site plan and grading and concept. And I, I think at least in my interpretation of this and based on past experience that what you've described would fall within uh, working to address the comments. It doesn't hold you to any particular okay. measure. Mike, did you have anything? Yeah, I forgot to ask. Uh, um, where are the mechanicals going, like HVAC? They're inside center? the building. They're all inside. They're okay. All inside. No, I'm staring at that flat roof, and I was just, yep. I had to ask the question to make sure they didn't show up on that. Thank you. All right. Any other comments? I just might offer on that, just on that discussion point that in talking with, with Angela, um, you know, we felt that the tree box filter relocation or just talking about that wouldn't really ostensibly change the site, so we were comfortable at this point. Um, moving forward, so I think you know you, you've echoed where staff's position on it is, is that it can be. And I think that's Angela why I, there was a comment in there about it being so significantly wide. You have a 45 foot, mm -hmm. and so maybe a compromise about shifting it plus mm -hmm. maybe a slight reduction. Yeah, I, I think it speaks to because we didn't really get a chance to talk about the stormwater. I mean, we really are treating 50% of the site, even though from an ordinance and stormwater standpoint, there isn't maybe as aggressive <coughs> treatment required. So we just want to make sure that if we're going to relocate it, that it doesn't, it doesn't burden the project further. We'll leave that to you and our capable staff. Okay. Anything else? All right. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you and Thank look, you. look forward to seeing it. Is there a town planner's report? Uh, yep, I have two things to mention to the board. Just uh, let board members know, and I believe you saw an email to this effect, but the complete streets policy was um, accepted by the council, so that is now a standing policy of the town. And the other item, again, I think you've received a few e emails from Karen on this, is that uh, the main municipal association is putting on a training for planning board and board of appeals <coughs> members. Um, I know a few planning board members have already indicated they're able to go and willing to sign up. And if anyone else is interested, I believe Karen's going to be putting in our uh, registration tomorrow. So um, mm. please touch base with her. It's, it's good if you are new and good if it's been a while since you've been there. So comes, comes recommended. Thank you. Administrative amendment report. Two items to report. Um, let's see, down at the Hillcrest Retirement Community, <coughs> um, they received administrative approval for a small garage expansion. Um, and the other one is uh, Cornerstone Baptist Church. Board members might recall this is before you just a meeting or two ago for a small addition. They, it, when they were doing their final planning, they realized that they added a little bit more to the addition. It would make coordination of the site a lot easier. Um, and, and fit in with the overall master plan for the site. And again, that's an item that had been reviewed by staff and the board chair and received an administrative approval. 
Thank you. Any planning board correspondence? You did, will have received uh, memos from the Conservation Commission on the 299 Gorham Road project. That's the uh, project that's going through the master plan review process that Ken Grondin is working on across from the Nunsuch River Golf Course. Um, so um, I do have a question as it relates to that. I was just looking it over. So is this, this is obviously a recommendation. Do we know, I mean, what's the process here? So we, we, we asked the Conservation Commission to weigh in. Mm -hmm. They've handed their opinion to the applicant and to us, obviously. Mm -hmm. When they come back to us, are we expecting them to incorporate this? Or are they going to be, are these, is this more or less for us to use when we discuss the project it's, with them? It's an advisory opinion to the okay. board. That's the what I want to The say. applicant may look at some of these comments and say, oh, those are easy fixes. We'll do them. They may say, well, we don't like these, and who knows how they'll address them. That's uh, what, but that, that was an advisory what my concern was, because I see that they've asked them to maybe do some studies and things, and I didn't know if that was already required of them. Some Thank of those studies clarifying. will be required. We can yeah. talk about those when they come back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yep. Thanks. Any planning board comments? Yep. Me oh, yeah. too. Oh, go ahead, Sue, because I've got a report. you got a report. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be quick. Um, I just want to re refer back to the um, Conservation Commission's report. I find this very exciting, and I want to com commend staff for having assisted them in getting their, um, becoming familiar, getting their feet wet, however you want to talk about it, in terms of giving them a real specific thing to do and to roll to to, um, to play, and I would like to encourage us as a board to ask for their input as much as is possible. I would like to have them take a look at um, the brewery, for example. Never thought of it. Anyway, so excellent job. And then I'm just, <coughs> I'm just bringing this up. I think On the Buy Marketplace is an example of an administrative approval that perhaps should not have been an administrative approval. And I'm not bringing that up as a condemnation. I'm just saying I think it's the kind of thing that we need to be really careful about because something like that could easily lead to just what it did tonight. Whereas if they had come to us at the very beginning, they would have had a heads up and it wouldn't have been a shock to them, especially since they really didn't have a lot of previous experience doing this sort of thing. Or, or with this jurisdiction, either. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, right. the jurisdiction right. thing was just really very complex, and right. I, I think it turned out just fine, considering all mm -hmm. the things that could have happened. But perhaps we ought to take another look at that sort of thing in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Uh, all right, just a comment, uh, and it pertains to um, it'll have some effect on Ron. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to mention about the bus station, uh, the bus stop that is planned for. Uh, Martin's point. And we also, if I recall, we there was one for Investor. They were talking about okay. putting one down there. And um, it seems to me that, for instance, this one here at Martin's Point, you're, you could conceivably have a bus stop on the southbound lane. Now, I assume people who are, tra are traveling southbound are also going to want to go northbound at some point. So you'd need a bus station on the other side of the road. But you're not going to have the bus coming crossing over somehow. So I, I, I would refer this to your transportation committee to, gotcha. to, to consider a um, some sort of a master plan if we're going to be encouraging bus public transportation along Route 1. That has been brought up before, by the way, uh, a master plan, and, and it sort of fell not out of the realm of things, but in back burner, and I'll bring it up again at our next meeting, which is February 23rd. So thank you for that. Okay. Thank you. I expect one of those stations to be named <laughs> after me. That is. <laughs> Dream on. Ron? That's that's a great lead-in uh, <coughs> uh, to uh, my transportation committee report because there's a lot that's going on. And <coughs> Jay sort of took a little bit of my thunder away here <laughs> in that we worked hard on this streets, yeah. uh, complete streets policy, which we were thrilled that it was unanimously uh, passed by by the council. Um, and in short terms, it just makes life easier for everybody, automobiles, pedestrians, bicyclists. And, uh, I mean, it's not an easy project. And uh, uh, the recommendations and what was passed was uh, after many years, uh, many months, I should say, of, of working together. 
so that has been done. Uh, as an aside, so I second. Uh, Angela sits on, on the Transportation Committee with me, and she even makes things clear for me, which is very, very <laughs> difficult to do. And uh, I, I, she is just a welcome employee to this town, and I want that publicly stated. And, and uh, uh, in the short time she's been here, I think she's accomplished so much, and uh, look forward to her accomplishing a lot more as time passes. Um, having said that, we have three applications into PACs, okay? Uh, one for, that's available in 2017 for Gorham Road, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, where we've asked for the maximum there, and we have to put up 25 percent. And I think the maximum is 200,000. And if it goes through, it hasn't, it hasn't gone through yet, has it, Angela? No, that's for an MPI project. Yes, we have to uh, put up our own funds, to, which is like 70, 75,000. Uh, but that has been in. And then there are two other going in because it's always three years out. Mm -hmm. And uh, one is for Pine Point, uh, and it's a real step-by-step -step process. So it's, it's, it's a difficult process, and that's why it has to be done so much in advance. Um, and uh, there's a, another one for, what's the other one? Uh, East Grand, I think. Uh, right, one, one is the intersection. East Grand Ave, and, and one is, one is Pine Ave. Point, East Grand Intersection. Um, and we're working on that, and there are applications going in to PACs uh, for that, and that's going to be a, an interesting evolution also because of the difficulties of what's going on down there. But it, uh, that's what we're working on right now uh, as, a, uh, uh, as a committee. Uh, those are two, two or three items. We're still working with the railroad. I did bring that up the last time I... Gave you an out on that, but we're still working on, on with the railroad about the horn uh, as it goes through uh, my area of the woods, and uh, that's about this, what's going on in that committee. A lot going on. Thanks, Ron. Um, just a couple quick com comments for me. Number one, um, I'll echo what Susan said about the conservation commission. Um, appreciate the time and effort that they've put into the recommendations, not only looking at the plans, but taking the time to meet with the applicant and their representative, and I think that's a valuable service to us. Um, and just want to thank everyone for their support, Mr. Chair, and look forward to another good year. And uh, with that, I'll move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Thank you. And I do have you right.